What have you got? Well, Hal, I have a little gimmick here that will just about set things up. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our actual play of Fallout on Tales of Myth and Mayhem. My name's Michelle Snow. You can't see me, uh, so I've replaced myself with a picture of the original Vault Dweller from Fallout 1. Uh, all of you Johnny-come-latelys to Fallout 3, and or Fallout New Vegas, and Fallout 4, you don't know. You, do, you weren't there in 1998, playing it on a beige box behind your parents' sofa, hoping having the time of your life but anyway welcome to our this game the game is called never fucking changes because it never does hello to all of our players say hello players hello players hello player jinx well i kind of set myself up for that so we have catherine we have jordan we have levator and we have tim and we are going to return to the commonwealth wasteland where our heroes have left their home to go seek an important item to ensure the survival of their town full of their loved ones and all of their stuff. So last week they were wandering towards the area of Quincy because they had a lead saying that the object they are searching for was there in a vault that has never been opened called Vault 88. And they stumbled across, in uh, Roman's case, an old friend who was being attacked by a bunch of rad roaches. And last week, our heroes valiantly defeated all of those rad roaches and saved a character called Stupid Jim. And literally the last thing that happened was Stupid Jim, who used to be a member of the Sisterhood of Pain, a very bad and naughty faction in the Commonwealth Wasteland. He has now decided to leave because he wants to be good. And he heard a broadcast while scavenging in the Boston Wastes on a radio that was still receiving power, a call from people in Quincy for help. And he is now run off in the direction of Quincy to answer that call. Players, what would you like to do? Well, we did... Head to Quincy. Yeah, to Quincy anyway. Follow. <clears throat> okay, okay, so... so this is full, this idiot. So you've decided to follow <laughs> Stupid Jim. You are roughly about a day out. It's currently 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So if you walk all day and then rest for tonight and then continue walking all morning tomorrow, you should arrive in the Quincy area. So would you like to um, camp out and uh, talk to Stupid Jim and talk amongst yourselves? Or would you like to just sleep through the night and just cut straight to you all arriving at the area of Quincy? I just want to double check that we're eating and drinking something when we start. Yep, I was going to start tracking that on the table here for each of us. I don't know, do we want to talk to Stupid Jim just now? Um, unless there's a need. Uh, I He's told us everything he needed to know last time, I believe, if any relevance. The minor chit-chat. Where he's been and what he's seen might be the only other thing. Yeah took care of all the healing and stuff like that we all up to full and stuff like that right i believe so <clears throat> did you so it sounds like you want to just basically go to sleep tonight and head straight to quincy in the morning is that what you want to do okay so you camp with Stupid Jim. He yabbers on about uh, what he's been up to since he left the uh, Sisterhood, of, uh, Sisterhood of Pain. It's not been much. He's not really had that many chances to be a hero because whenever people see him, they throw things at him. Um, so, But then you just go to sleep, you have something to eat, and the next day you m walk towards Quincy. And when you're about an hour away from the area of Quincy, you see a row of three houses surrounded by lots of rubble these three houses are a bit dilapidated but it's kind of they're kind of whole what would you like to do does it look uh, inhabited scavenge Yeah, that would be a good thing to check. Do we see any signs of life? Or, uh, or 
are ghouls. It's very quiet. Like, if there is anything alive here, it is being very, very quiet. And if... And you don't see anyone within as far as your vision goes. Because this area, it's like mostly rubble and rocks. The ground, it's not really sand. It's not really soil. It's sort of in between. There's, you don't really notice any obvious signs that other people have been walking through it. This is an area that you are pretty sure you are alone in. Freddy, you look over to the group. I think we should take the time to maybe see what we can find here, since it doesn't seem too destroyed. Sounds like a good idea. How do you normally do this? Because I've never, I haven't scavenged for months. <laughs> um, look, walk through everything. Hope it doesn't fall on you, and check everywhere. Fair. Pretty much the same as it ever was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you find anything remotely interesting, bring it out, and we'll determine. If it's worth throwing on Kumu here and taking for trade. Well, it sounds like you uh, want to scavenge. Is that right? That would be the attempt okay. we're going to do. So this is a good chance to uh, go over the scavenging rules. Uh, Fallout is a little different. It l will allow you... The rules will allow you to essentially search all three houses all at once. It's a really good system that way. It's quite fast, so you don't have to like go through each individual room and roleplay every room. The scavenging system basically takes a whole area and boils it down into a simple scavenger check. Now, you could make this a group check, which if there's four of you searching, you're more likely to find stuff. Or it could be individual, an individual check or individual checks. It's up to you how you proceed. Um, just to remind you, um, Overseer, um, I have a couple abilities. I'm going to post them in our, in Roll20 chat, just in case they come up. I do like being called Overseer. <laughs> Goodness. Okay, cool. All right. Well, in that case, well, how group checks work are... You select a leader who rolls as usual, and you can also, and that leader can use um, party's AP to buy additional dice if they so choose. Then each player rolls one d20 based on their own special plus skill. Which in this case, when it's scavenging, it's perception survival. As long as the leader rolled at least one success, everyone adds theirs to the pool. If enough successes results are generated the success results are generated the group passes the test so all players can gain crits or complications as usual so in a way it's kind of high risk high reward there's more of you searching so you're more likely to succeed in finding everything that you can but there's also more chances to su overly succeed and find even more stuff or add a complication to things oh let's risk it all as much as possible. I I'll think that's a good lead, call. Though. I just tried to okay. indicate that with pointing and realized that um, where I'm pointing is nothing to do with where I am on the stream. So that was pointless. Okay, so, so some information <laughs> that you need to know. This is going to be a perception survival test with a difficulty of two. And it will take you 90 minutes to search all three houses. So if you fail for some reason... You can search again, but it will take you another 90 minutes. You see what I mean? Yep. Um, and do we have to rec uh, say action points ahead of time or not? Um, you can do action points after you roll. To use them. Okay. Let's see how I do then. So is everyone... This is going to be a group test. Is everyone okay. going to roll? Yeah. Okay. Everyone hit. What did you say to roll again, Michelle? I'm sorry. Um, perception survival. Perception survival. And I would like to use an action point to re-roll one of my dice when you, you might not need to, because um, well, I mean, Augusta's yep. contribution alone means you not only passed, but uh, what's the word for it? I've got my 
I've got my GM screen here. Oh, yeah, we actually got an extra action point out of that if we made two. She got two successes. And we are rolling two d20s, all of us. Huh. Lovely rolling at the beginning. That's how it always starts. Oh, you're only. I think you're only supposed to roll one d20 each. One but I will yeah. let this one go because I wasn't the most clear about it. And also, um, this is a very easy scavenging run. Like, there's no one around, and there's three houses that have been partly searched, but mostly they're intact as you walk around. For whatever reason, a lot of the stuff here has been... Uh, the stuff that was there when the bombs fell is still there. And also, there's been other stuff that has been left behind by others that maybe over the last two centuries have stopped for the night or camped there. So I'm going to say that you passed this check. And then some. You scored a critical, which means you can keep, you can bank the action point, or you could use that action point to gain more items. So what would you like to do? I think it's your call, Freddy. You were leading the action. Yeah, I don't even know how to set up perception survival. I only have survival endurance. Oh, right. Okay. In, um, the, in rule 20, top left, beside the little picture of a person's face, there's like an outline of a die, and you can ro oh, I see. click on that, you can roll anything. Thank you. Also, um, on your character sheet, um, let me just roll uh, load up a person. I shouldn't character. have even rolled anyways. Well, it's fine, because the party passed, and nobody scored like any critical failures. In fact, there was one critical success, so, you know. That's Look, you were there, and that's the main perfect. thing. So, let me just load <laughs> yeah, up a player's sheet. there for sheet. moral support. So, Jordan, on your character sheet, in the top left corner of it, you'll see, like, a dice. He's more worried about hitting his head as he walks through. If you click I mean, yeah, on true. if you click on that dice in the top left corner of your character sheet, it'll if let it's you... max action points according to what I see, um, we might as well use it to spend an additional item. <laughs> or items. My action points says three. So but... what do we need to roll? How okay. is everyone else? Okay, I've been muted for a while while I was explaining a bunch of stuff. I don't know. Jordan, when you want to when you need to do a certain check, um on your character sheet in the top left corner, there is a dice symbol. If you click on that, it will let you select a yeah, attribute. Yeah, I guess to help me out with that. Oh, cool. We, then you're sorted. We, we, okay. Yep. So, you have been successful. And you were going to... I think you said you were going to use the, the critical to roll an extra dice when it comes to getting items, right? Is that what you said? Correct. Because we, as far as... I wanted to... Yes, and I also wanted to ask, what do you have for our action points right now, Michelle? Uh, one second. I've got them all. I've got you at five. I had mine at max. So I d okay. Well, you had them at max, I'll fine. believe Use you. I may item. have forgotten to track it myself, so don't worry about that. I put mine up to I... six. I was also at five, and we went up to six based no... on the rules there, but we're going to spend it immediately, so we're back down to five. Okay. So you're at five hit points, uh, action points now, and you're going to spend an extra action point to roll on an extra time on the die on the on the table. I will be sending you. Players... Yep. How many times do we get to roll? I'm sending you on Discord. Oh, for some reason it's not done a actual copy and paste. It's just posted an image of what I was sending. That is not what I wanted to happen. Right. So I'm sending you a list of the tables to roll on, and the numbers that I'm sending you, the first number is how many rolls you have. The second number is how many rolls you could potentially have on that um, loot table, if you see what I mean. So for example, currently, you get zero rolls on the ammo table, zero rolls on the armor table, two rolls on the clothing table, etc. But if you spend an action point, it means that you can roll an additional time on any of those that I've sent you. So, all right. Um, any so we can roll on all those tables. Uh, you see or... the numbers next to the tables. Um, nah. The first number. For... 
Yeah, two, two on four. I'm just saying we can. I see two and four, one and three, one and three, yeah, one so and two. For example, you are allowed sure. to roll two times on the clothing book table, one time on the food table, one time on the beverages table, and one time on the chems table. All right, that's what I was trying to figure out. And Make one sure time on chems. Right, so. Yeah. The second number is how many times you could roll if you spend action points, essentially. So with one action point, you can roll uh, an additional dice on any of those tables if you so choose. All right, so let's just start with our clothing. Does anybody want to roll that one? It would be a 2d20. Otherwise, I can do that. I've got, I've got one here manually ready to go. All right, go for it. Three. And oh, an a 11. welder's visor. So that's 14. And a lab coat. Oh, um, on the clothing table, you need to roll two d20s. I'll take that as a three and an 11 then. Oh, okay. Three and 11, that's what we got from that. That was 2d20. Okay. So what you found a... Well okay, so th a welder's visor and a lab coat. All right, uh, next table would be the food and beverage one. Someone else wants to do this one? Roll it. I can do those two. The food and beverage tables are separate, so you get one roll on the food and one roll on the beverages table. Didn't we have, like, a diet roll on D22? Oh, there. I see it. I see it. Uh... There. Uh, so 11 on food and 14 on beverage. All right. It was a riso razor grain for the food. And what was the beverage? Uh, 14. Although I only rolled, yeah, one, but. Okay, somewhere along the line, I screwed up on the 14, and I must have deleted it, so we don't have a 14 on that table. I apologize. No, I'll tell you what happened. There was an updated food but, table. Uh, um, oh, on beverages. Oh, you see, yeah. um, in the errata, it's, it's, uh, they, uh, they updated it saying that like 14 is supposed to be the blood pack so if any so i actually screwed that up it's supposed to be um okay so 14 and 15 it's supposed are blood to be 12 packs, to 14 so blood bourbon, and 15 is a blood pack i'll just change that now okay so I'll, uh, yep okay so you got bourbon we found a bourbon well that's good what about you, um, Jordan? Are you going to take the... And then we got... Uh, Kems and Dink. I, I, I was going to roll Kems because I automatically get a free ex extra. Oh, okay. Yep. No, that's only a 1d20, is it? I don't know which one I rolled. I got too many charts open and I'm starting to bug out. That was a 24. That would be a stim pack diluted. Cool. So if you want to roll again for, because of your perk. Because I think that's what it means, isn't it? It means you roll again. It doesn't mean you get like an additional of the same thing, does it? Yep. I get a free... I get to find an additional item... For free, yes. 11 would be a cycle. Um, which which table would you guys want me to roll from? There's junk left, so if you just roll 2d20, we'll yeah, find junk it. Junk is 1d20. With the, yeah, so, the number of dice for each table is in the top left. Some need 1d20, some need 2, and some need 3. Okay. 
three junk. Okay, so junk is just a cover all for basically, cover. Um, like, if you, you found a kettle or a toaster or a TV or something. Like, it's just random crap, which you can, with the right skills, convert into materials that you can use to build mods and upgrade your weapons if you so choose. Yeah. But we can go all of, over all of that if and when you find a workbench or area where you are able to do that. So let me know when you've uh, finished like uh, writing ev everything down that you've collected, and we'll continue. Don't feel like I'm. I put it in the. I put it in Discord so we'll have cool. it. Should we put it oh, straight on to me? To me, or do we want to have them separately? Yeah, I, at at the time, I'm I'm just for speed. Sure, sure. I'm just putting it there. So. But yeah, it's on to me. Nothing should weigh enough that I'm worried about him overweight yet. So, oh, for the sake of anyone who's not seen before, Tumu is the Brahmin who's carrying all of our stuff. Yeah, the unsung hero of the party. <clears throat> so, you go inside the house. Oh yeah, I will remind. Uh, I'm milking her every morning. So, I'm milking Tumu every morning, so we get some actual fresh milk every morning too. Okay, so. I will keep that in mind. And if for some reason you, there, there something happens where I think that you are not able to milk Tumu, I will let you know. But otherwise, unless I state, then yeah, you absolutely get milk every day from Tumu. Um, so you all go into the house and you leave stupid Jim to look after Tumu outside. Are you sure about that? <laughs> if anything, Tumu appears to have totally taken to stupid Jim. Uh, stupid Jim... <laughs> Seems to always have had an affinity with animals. He seems to be able to appreciate Tumu's needs. It's quite surprising that that is the way it is. But, you know, stupid Jim, for some reason, seems to be getting on with Tumu. So you all go inside and you individually run around and scrape around and you find a bunch of stuff. You think that in one of the houses, the person there was a bit of a scientist, a bit of a... had a bit of a laboratory, you know... You find a bunch of junk, a bunch of other stuff, and uh, you're reasonably happy. So when you emerge from the house, you find that um, Stupid Jim is actually sitting on the back of Tumu, running around in circles and laughing his head off. What would you like to do? <laughs> Roman, can you have a word? Get off my Brahmin, you idiot! <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, sorry, okay, just then. making friends. You're gonna wear it out and get. Ah. <laughs> Hopefully, you didn't disturb anything that's on there. Break anything. Ah, Jim, that was stupid. <laughs> well, I did earn this name. That is that is that is that is truly the case. I I I, I apologize so much, Freddy. I'm so sorry, Freddy. Please don't hurt me, Freddy. Or if you do... No problem. Apologize to Tumu, not me. You're the one running him around. Tumu, I humbly apologize. So, but... Tumu has no idea what is going on because Tumu is a Brahmin. Um, <laughs> but one of, one of his heads decides to lick Stupid Jim and Stupid Jim has a big smile on his face. Ah, oh, I think that means he forgives me. Yes. Now, help us load this stuff up and... Absolutely. Then we're going to Quincy to help, yes? clean up his mess. <laughs> we're headed that way, yes. So Stupid Jim helps Unless you. Unless you have someplace else to go, that's not where we're headed. I... <clears throat> Stupid Jim stops for a second this is I don't have anywhere else to go no bad thoughts bad thoughts load the Brahmin load Tumu yes and he begins to load Tumu with all of the items you have just found and I'm guessing that means that you're going to head off into the in the direction of the Quincy area yes okay so 
You arrive at the on the outskirts of the Quincy area, and you find yourself on a bit of raised land. Not exactly a mountain, a little less than a hill, but enough to see in front of you the Quincy area, more or less. So I'm going to transition the scene to show our wonderful audience roughly <laughs> what the players can see. And I'm going to share a document with you all <coughs> on Roll20 so you can see what you can see. So, there, so you should be able to see a map with a bunch of icons on it. Now, you can head towards any of those icons on the screen. You can ask me what you can see and what you understand from where you're standing about any of the icons on the screen. Where are we on the screen? You are currently to the south of the screen. You are basically on a bit of raised land where you can see to your right the main, the big, f thick black line that's running through the middle. That's to the right of you. Which... But you're slightly off the screen. You're oh, basically so slightly a, off the Is that a road? The big black line? Yes, all of the lines in it are roads or what is left of roads. Okay. So the big black line is a rope. Sorry? Yep. Okay, and uh, I'm assuming Quincy is the building in the middle. Yes, that is the, that is, uh, is that the, the actual town, that is or like, is that the that is the actual is... town and town center of Quincy itself? Okay, so that's our goal. And what do we observe from the rise, looking at these other sites? I'm seeing some icons that scare me. Okay, so the one in the bottom left, that appears to be a jet black building. There that's is the one that's the star in a circle. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, the one on the right, like the, 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 the bottom oh, right, that is... Wrong light, sorry. Yeah, got you. That, there is a sign on it that you can't really read from where you are. You have to approach less close to see what it is. Um... The next icon along the main road, the uh, gun and the lightning, that is a few tents. There is some smoke rising from that tent, from those tents. You can't see anyone there. It's a bit too far away to see, to even spot people. But even if, but you know, even if there were people running around there, you probably won't be able to see them from where you are. To the left of that is the star. You can barely make out what that is, but you think that there is some kind of grey building. Maybe. From where you are. And then to the north of the Quincy Ruins, which is in the centre, you can vaguely see a big, like, gap in... Well, gap's the wrong word. Basically, a massive crater. Like the, uh, like the, the, the landscape suddenly dips and then rises again. And next to that, with the icon in the top left corner, that is unmistakably to you all. Everyone here has intimate experience with a vault, except Freddy. But Freddy has seen vault doors before, and Freddy knows that he has walked past that before. That is a vault door. And in the top right corner, you can see... You can barely make it out, but you can see a red rocket. A giant red thing shaped like a rocket. Okay. I don't like those tent group over there. That reminds me of the brotherhood. Yeah, same. I tend to avoid those kinds of groups. Especially now. Yeah. In fact, that's a point. Is there a chance that the, the Brotherhood are aware sure of me as a person, or do they just know about <clears throat> the stuff that we did off camera? The in your previous in 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 the previous adventures of the people of Edensborough, you made a lot of enemies. The Brotherhood being one of them. 
the Brotherhood know that you rescued and the Mindful Mutants from the Brotherhood. You killed a lot of knights in the Brotherhood fire while saving the Mindful Mutants. You made a lot of enemies in the Sisterhood of Pain because you foiled their plan. They planned to use the Gek to essentially annihilate Diamond City. Yeah. They were going to unpack it and unleash all of the terraforming on Diamond City and wipe it off the face of the planet. And that you stopped them doing that. And they know, they especially know who you are, Augusta. And they especially know who Jordan, um, who, um, well, ah, I'm getting the names mixed up. Um, especially they know, they especially know who Roman is. They don't really know who Jade and Freddy are. We should stay out of the way, I think, if we're near big groups of people until we find out who they are. It's not like I can wrap my lab coat around my head or anything, but... Kind of hard to disguise, you two. <laughs> well, um, I should I, I could point out that you can, from where you're seeing those tents with with the, with the lightning and the gun symbol, there's like three tents. Also, I've been out of circulation for a bit, so they might assume that I've gone somewhere yeah, else or I'm... something. Well, I'm also thinking there's so few of them, I just want to avoid yeah, contact. Yeah, I'm with you on that. So they can communicate with others. So go into the lift. So, uh, I was... Well, that way I don't... If we follow the road, I'm... Well, if you guys stay out of sight, maybe I can distract I them. Keep it busy. takes longer, but it's, if we stay off problem. the road, we'll meet less people, fewer people. Yeah, it doesn't look that far. I guess we can go. Um, head towards Quincy. Without just straight on the trail, I guess. Any points? Just Maybe don't go way. all the way so we can have a look <laughs> at it and from a distance and get some sense of what's actually happening because who knows how old that radio broadcast was that Jim heard. Maybe they've well, all been... When did yeah. you last hear it, Jim? <laughs> that I heard that four, like, well, five days ago. So I heard it, then I ran for a day, then I was attacked by rad roaches, and I think I was there for three days, fending them off, then you came along, and that was yesterday. Okay, so about five days ago. So it's fairly they recent. They could still be fighting, but they also might not be. Hopefully they're still there. We should go and look. Yeah. But the question is, do we want to follow the road or just cross country? You've done this more than I have, but my inclination would not be to follow the road. Well, I usually follow the roads, but I have, I'm not known. I guess I'll just stay out of the way as much as I can then. <laughs> <clears throat> well... Let's just head straight towards Queen. Um, uh, the plan will be then, I guess, uh, he's just going to just start over, overland towards I mean, Quincy's ruins. We were already so. off the road, right? We were not on the road. Yeah, the way I figured it was that you were walking on the road to get to the Quincy area, then you stopped and you went up a bit of elevated okay. turf to uh, overlook the area. Okay. So, did we want to follow the road before we go? Otherwise, it's the quickest way. The easiest way. for Tumu. Um, I guess uh, you said you wanted to talk about some. I mean, to me, it's... I think... Makes no different. I only think about... Augusta's safety most if we are going Don't near... worry about me, I've been through worse than this before <coughs> That may be, I just remember you were saying, asking to talk to about something and then things kept happening Well, is there any input you want to put in here, Roman about what's the safest way? I mean, I don't think those three little tents of people are going to be too big of a problem, but don't want to cause any trouble. I mean, I doubt they'd be much of a problem. Bring in but more. You can never tell. It's always good to be cautious. I I could be a bit curious uh, as to what uh, that um, 
power tower uh, sign is and if you continue on the road that will come first yeah well how about you guys hang back and if there's problem you come and get me and I'll, I, I can follow the road along and see what pops up. I mean, we're going that way anyway, all of us. So M might be strength in numbers instead. Well, a couple of you are well known. To speak a little more on the infamy. That's of... the only thing I'm worried about is. Go ahead. Okay, um, to speak a little more on the infamy of uh, your group, Augusta is the most well-known by far because she is the one who was at the start, who was there right at the start of the previous adventure. She also was a the most likely to be involved in major decisions for the group as the group grew larger and larger and larger over the space of the nine months it took you to find the Gek. The mutants in your party are probably less likely to be identified because most of the people who live in settlements are humans. And humans are very bad at being able to tell one mutant from another. So mutants probably have an easier time of hiding, but will arouse just as much suspicion because they're super mutants. And most super mutants in the wasteland are seeking to kill everyone. Freddy, you... You are kind of known to certain traders in most settlements. You probably know at least one person that you have bartered with. Quincy being an ex exception, because when you have previously walked through there, there was only maybe a few people at most, and they kept their distance from you. Um, but So you are not exactly known as being a part of the group, even though you kind of were, but you joined the group quite late, and there was already like 250 people in the larger group at that point. So you kind of mixed in. So you're probably the most anonymous and least likely to arouse suspicion out of everyone. These are general principles and guidelines. There will be exceptions in the wasteland, but that is essentially kind of where you're at. Well, no use just standing here. Yeah, that's cool. And what we we'll find figure we it find. out when we get a chance. Or else we us sending freddy on the road and the rest of us a bit more off road going on going behind i'm i'm disinclined to hang back like we could always go on the other side of tumu if we need to hide in some way or i can pull like a something over my head and okay walk differently there's options all right then let's go together I I hand you the welder's visor. Yeah, that'll help. Just make sure I'm working in a straight line, please. <laughs> also, Augusta, remember that you were given a gas mask. I do have the gas mask, and I also have a reasonable stealth, I think. Just to make a game a tiny bit. I'm just... Uh, people... Just to keep your face... Good. I'll do the gas mask, and I'll tie my hair up. I have a, a kind of a unique view on metagaming. I'm kind of okay with it as long as you come up with a story reason why it happened. So as long as you come up with something amazingly imaginative and funny, I'll probably <laughs> let it go. Oh, no. Um, no, I, she had to find ways to um, be stealthy because she spent like the first few months after leaving the vault having to like source everything by herself. So she was just stealing from places that were basically deserted, although in some places they weren't deserted. But she'd always go in quiet. See, that meets the um, threshold. It makes sense. That threshold is makes sense or is fucking hilarious. Those are the two <laughs> thresholds. So, I feel like fucking hilarious is going to happen on this one, but we can come to that. So you've decided to approach uh, which area as a group? Following the road. I I really want to check out the the first building we come to on the, on the right-hand side uh, to see if Anything useful is there. The, the tower? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to approach the symbol on the bottom right of the map. Yep. 
and you're going to approach on the road. Yes. Okay. So you walk on the road and you follow. Yeah, we're just going along the road that way, I guess, and uh, head to Quincy. All right. So you're going to walk along the road, and as you get closer to the first building in the bottom right corner, you see bl a black metallic building roughly about three stories high it has a number of pylons all around it and as you approach you see a sign on the front says poseidon energy now would you like to walk past it or would you like to approach even further and maybe even go inside is that a name i recognize yes um Poseidon Energy were a pre-war energy company. They were responsible for... They were basically like an American uh, 2077 equivalent of British gas or something like that. They were a powerful company, the biggest in America. By far, they had lots of government contracts. So st stations like this, and you are pretty sure it is a power station, or at least was, were pretty common all over America. So you all have all seen things like Poseidon energy things in your travels, like maybe every few, maybe every hundred miles or so, you've prob they will pr you could probably find a Poseidon energy building of some kind in America. Is it worth scavenging? Every Any place can be worth scavenging, it's just do we have the time... Oh, we got the the God board is the key right yeah. now. There's the possibility of looking into it when we come back. But in order to trade for it, we could use. We could look as we come back. Yeah. If we come back this way. Yeah, yeah I believe the vault is our end goal. Isn't that where you said we'd find this God board? That's where we reckon would be our best chance. Or we were told. Like we haven't got a full record of all the vaults yet, but that there seems to be enough that we've heard about from that place that there might be a part there. Okay, well, we need to find information about the area. Quincy's the best place, but if you want to go look at this building, I'm not going to stop you. I don't mind coming, getting it on the way back, but if someone else wants to go and see what it is now, that's okay. No, let's save it then. So you're going to Let's walk past continue. the Poseidon Energy Station? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where are you heading to? I'm just continuing along the way. So you're going to follow the road? Headed to Quincy Ruins is basically where we're eventually our goal is, but we'll see what we get. Okay. Um, as you walk further along the road, you get a bit closer to the tents. Um, you see fly, uh, there's a flag flying above one of the tents. It is red, white, and blue. It is similar to the pre-war American flag, but in the blue part, instead of loads of stars, there is that symbol of what looks to be a rifle and a lightning bolt and a star. Like the image, like the, um, basically that's the symbol on the map is the same symbol on the flag. There is smoke rising from there, but you don't see anyone. You're about 100 feet away at this point. What would you like to do? First question is, do we re recognize Do we recognize that symbol? You know what? This is going to require a roll. I just need to work out what kind of roll it is. I'm just quickly looking at someone's character sheet just to figure this out. So... This is going to be an intelligence perception roll. The difficulty of three. So you need three successes. And anyone can do this. Anyone can make this roll. Um, uh, you can't you're... do it as a group. Because you're recollecting your own memories. And you can't really do that as a group. So, yeah. yeah. But just, just intelligent okay. perception... Intelligence and oh, that's... I got that wrong. Uh, yeah. Apologies. You can't have both. It's an intelligence role. Um, <laughs> see, the skills in this don't necessarily always make it easy to relate to um, memory. So I'm going to say.
You know what? Because it's going to be like a, a, a rank situation anyway. Um, I'm going to say that it's... Um... If you have a skill that has a 2, a rank of 2, use that. I will fix this issue later because um, this is an er this is a whole I think a bit of a hole in the in the game to be honest. So I may invent a skill to that everyone needs to add to their sheet when it comes to re recollecting memory, a memory skill. But for now, just uh, basically pick a skill that has two in it and use that. I mean survival. Use that. It's just it's about the number at this point. So intelligence, survival. Yeah, if, that, if you've got a 2 in survival, use that. No, intelligence. I mean, I don't have a 2 in survival, but I have a 3. Yeah, you know, I'll let that slide. Use that. So. Ah. Okay. Jade. You succeeded. No, wait. I you don't get any criticals on the two, do you? So, Jade, if you wanted to, you could spend an action point to get the three successes required for you to remember what you know of that flag. Uh, sure. But... <laughs> <laughs> so that means that you're down to four action points. Is that right? Okay, so it was a difficulty. It was a difficulty of three. Okay. You score two successes. You spend one eight action point. You can make that three successes. Okay, because otherwise it wouldn't really be. I should have bought an extra die. Otherwise, otherwise it wouldn't have been able to get. You three can buy successes. an extra dice after you roll. That is always an option. I was just. It wasn't possible to get three successes on 2d20. It if would it have is, been if you uh, rolled a critical. If you rolled a one, that would have been two successes. If okay. you rolled a one, one and another okay. success, that would have been three. Okay. Um, if we are okay with me using the action point in order to get the information we need, I'll do that. So we are down to four now. Yes, please. Yes. Okay, Jade, you recognize the symbol after a little bit of time thinking where you've seen it. That is a symbol of the Commonwealth Minutemen. They, you remember hearing in your travels of a group of people that came together decades ago to protect the, in the innocent and defend them from all dangers. However, you have not seen or heard about this group for many years. You were believed that they had vanished off the face of the earth. Interesting. So... Do you share this information? <laughs> Uh, yes, of course I do. Um, so, seeing that, I think as soon as Jade sees that, like, like, um, his brows go like, and looks a bit like, I thought they have disappeared. Um, and then it's the what did you call it, uh, Michelle? Uh, minute, uh, Minutemen. Oh, Why do I have that? Was that right? <laughs> yes, the Commonwealth Minutemen. Okay. Um. Uh, and they they are a group uh, sworn to protect. Um, the innocent. So if that is them, we should be safe. Unless they decide that we're not innocent. 
Sorry, I'm talking through a gas mask, but I'm not going to try and do that voice <laughs> effect. <laughs> or as, unless someone is just using their equipment, since they are supposed to be well, to to have disappeared, no one has seen them for a long time. It's not the brotherhood or the sisters, so I think we're okay. Uh, do we attract any attention as we're walking along? Oh, great overseer. Yeah, okay to be. Um, so you're going to approach the tents. At least follow the road. Uh, along the road. Just following the road. Yeah. So if we see somebody, maybe wave. This map is not exactly to scale. I've had to basically format it to fit on the screen for the stream. So you are about... It is about 100 meters away from... 100 feet, rather, away from the road on all sides. So you do keep maintain a certain distance and you don't see anyone you do see that there was recently a fire there but there is no longer a fire it's just smoldering it's just smoldering smoke at this point but obvious signs of life yeah someone has been there at some point in the last 20 as far hours. as reason does it look like there has been a fight yeah recently Honestly, there are no signs of there being any kind of fight. The tents are still up. There's no... You can't see any bullet holes or anything ah. in the tents. It's It just looks like a standard camp. Okay. It looks like they're probably out doing whatever yeah. they're doing. Let's just continue then. Yeah. Um, and yeah. if they're not in the camp, there's a chance they might be somewhere ahead of us doing whatever they're doing. Just worth keeping an eye out. Like, if they're not in the camp, they might be doing the fighting that stupid Jim was worried about. Yes. So, yeah, let's keep our eyes out, but I wouldn't be very... <laughs> worried about that. I have to step away for a second, guys. Go help my wife for a second so i will be i'm here i can hear you but i will be off screen so i apologize but okay um no i mean tim's a good husband i think that needs i think that needs saying he's very much proved that on a few screen on a few streams um i'm just i just realized whilst i was doing that that i was I failed to accurately do Tim's background. So, sorry about that, Tim. I'm going to fix it now while you're away. So when you come back, you'll never know until you rewatch this stream. Thank you, Ian. We have been gifted 300 bits. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Ian. Thanks, Ian. Three-eyed cat. Quickly finish off fixing Tim's uh, chroma situation. There we go. All right, so that should be fixed now. So yeah, okay. So you're going to um, carry on past it. I think was the plan. Yeah. So you're going to keep on walking uh, along that big road, and you get to the outside of the main point of the town of Quincy. So How big you... is the town? Well, the town, at this point, there's not a lot left of it. There's a lot of rubble all around, but there is... The town is essentially a main road that leads off the road you are on, and on either side there are... What was re remains of a town centre? So there are lots of places that used to be shops, maybe like something like a police station, or like a town... Or like a, the mayor's office, you know, that kind of thing. But essentially, Quincy, as a settlement is one road with a bunch of buildings on either side and you are currently standing at the at a crossroads ahead of you is the road leading into quincy proper and to the left there is a road leading up all the way to that symbol at the top of the screen so uh, which way would you like to go 
personally towards the vault, but I imagine Freddie might want Freddy, to salvage. Well, I'm looking at maybe we can sell some of the stuff, trade, and maybe find some information out about the area before. Might not we, be a bad idea. You know, if somebody. Especially we got the Minutemen and maybe some information about some of these places around here. It's worth traveling to. Besides, I think we could all use maybe a better bed than the ground we've been sleeping on if they got something that accommodates, but. That might be wishful thinking. I don't know. I find something terribly comforting about the ground, but there's reasons for that. Um, cautiously head into town, then, I guess, is my suggestion to the group. Yeah, fair. Be ready in case I mean, does it look like it's been pretty thoroughly scavenged friendly. already? Um, the Quincy, from what you can see... About 100 meters up along the road into Quincy, you can vaguely see people walking around. They haven't spotted you because you're a long way away, okay. really, but when you're looking and you squint your eyes, you can see people. Do they seem distressed or are they just walking around like... Well, they're just getting on with their day with you, as much as you can tell. Like, there's no obvious signs of anything. There's just people walking and maybe talking. They're stopping and stuff. Like, it, you're about 100 meters away, so you can't really see everything. But you but you know what? If you give me a perception check, I'll give you more information. If you do um, perspe perception and... Let me work this out. Let me just use my cheat sheet. Uh, perception, charisma. And I'm going to say it's charisma because you're working out how a bunch of people feel. No, not per speech, uh, charisma, speech, sorry. Perception, you can't, speech. You can't That's use... the one. Yeah, yeah, speech. Because you're trying to basically read someone's body language from 100 meters away. So this is going to be a DC of three to get really good information. But if you get two, you know, that'll be enough to get something. I got nothing. Not me either. Dice are a cruel I mistress. See what I get. Okay, you two barely. There's people out there? You can see what you think are people, maybe. They could be Brahmin. <laughs> Roman, your because of your role, much the same. Freddy, it you achieved bad. one success, so I will give you something. You have been to a lot of uh, settlements. You know when a settlement is on edge or defensive. You see no signs of that being the case. You can't tell what the mood is, but you know that it's, they're not actively hostile at this point. That's his key thing, to find out if they were hostile. I think, and he looks so, I think we're okay. They don't, they're not coming at us, and there was no guards around the perimeter so we come in slowly i think we can trade and maybe find some information out okay i'm happy Anybody to let you do the talking disagree? <laughs> i don't want to risk it and it's kind of hard to hear you with that mask on anyway. <laughs> Keep getting the urge to tell people I've been expecting them. Because I know there's penalties. And... <laughs> okay, so you've decided to approach. And, uh. Yeah. Yes. I'm hanging back a bit, but yeah. Though. So... Alright, so as you. I would approach. Oh, you want to do a marching order? So Freddy would be up first, I'm guessing, and, uh. Yeah, I know. I was just saying, I was going to approach, but hands up in a gesture of nonviolence type thing. You know, not like, but you know, hands. Unthreatening. <laughs> Carrying. Yes. Okay, so you approach. Leading you the approach. Brahmin. 
Freddy and Tubu leading the way. Freddy's hands up. And as you approach and get closer, you start to hear the bustle of uh, what you think maybe like 20 people running around doing their business. And as you walk up, you are approached by two people. The first person you see is a man in a beige trench coat with what appears to be some kind of cowboy hat. He has a medallion. Uh, oh, sorry. I got the. I was reading the, the wrong character information there. But um, she, I should say, she is wearing a beige trench coat with what appears to be a cowboy hat. And she is wearing a medallion that features the same symbol as the flag you just saw. She is pointing a. She is pointing a laser musket at you, and next to her is another woman who appears to be middle-aged. She's wearing clothes that are a bit run down, and she is not holding anything. And the woman who is pointing the laser musket at you says, "State your business." Trade and information. She looks at you for a second. Hopefully finding some. And I'm going to need to do a roll. Uh... Um... Augusta, are you wearing your gas mask? I am looking up. I have some special stuff. I certainly am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Da, da, da. Is it only me that gets a bit nervous when the GM just rolls <laughs> random dice? Well, no, you're <laughs> not. It's not at all. <laughs> okay, so she lowers her laser musket and says, Okay, but you should know, we're in a bit of a pickle here in Quincy. You can trade over at Caroline's place, just down the way. But we're a bit on edge. And at this point, stupid Jim pipes up, I heard the radio! You're in trouble! The woman... Yes, we found uh, another travelling companion along the way. The woman with the laser musket immediately points at a stupid Jim and says, You didn't say that you brought a member of the Sisterhood here. Former. Former member. He's from what we've been to told. Turn over a new leaf. The woman keeps her laser musket. And I only met him yesterday, so. <laughs> the, the woman has. Keeps the laser musket trained on stupid Jim for a minute. Well, not for a literal minute, but for a few seconds, and then lowers it and says, Tell me about this new leaf, stranger. The stupid Jim says, Well, the cry, the screaming god was wrong. We got the screaming god wrong. We believed that if we were, if we doled out pain to everyone, that would stop the bombs from happening again. The fire. But we got it wrong. The only way to stop the bombs and the fire from happening again is to be nice to people, and I'm here to help Quincy. He gets down on his knees and holds his hands up and says, Let me help. The woman is taken aback for a second, has no idea how to react to this, but then she brings, calms herself and just says, Well, everyone deserves to start again, I guess, and she puts the laser musket on her back. She says, I'm General Isaac. I'm the leader of the Commonwealth Minutemen, or what remains of us. And the woman next to her says, and I'm Scylla. Uh, we passed your camp. Well, hello. General I you said we could trade at your place? General Isaac, um, looks around. Scylla. What do you mean you passed our camp? Like, you didn't see anyone there? We came down the road. It... Yeah, nothing was there. She's... Other than us, look like the fire was out and tents were up, but we passed by. Jesus Christ, I don't... They must have gone off to go get some 
food or something. I don't know. Just they told them to let always have one person at camp. Because clearly anyone could just walk up on a Scylla. So she's referring, she's talking to the woman next to her. Mm -hmm. Well, don't. And you said it was your shop, her shop that we no, can partner uh, at? I'm Scylla. I'm kind of, I've kind of been made the leader around here. Sorry, your very strange friend said that he'd heard of the broadcast. Uh, yes, uh, we met him along the way. He said he heard the broadcast. I have not. So you're not here to help? It was, uh, if you're willing to share information, maybe. Well, I mean, I could just tell you what this deal is. Five days ago, a bunch of gunners came here and demanded that we leave Quincy. And said that they would return in ten days. And if we were still here, they'd kill everyone. Gunners being just another Time game. For the exposition bot, I or think. This is a term I'm trying. In Fallout Universe, there <laughs> is a, a group that are called the Gunners. They are basically a mercenary outfit. They have, out they have different groups of gunners in almost every part of America at this point. They will take any dirty job and kill anyone if the caps are right. They are essentially, well, they're mercenaries. They are the most Amoral mercenaries you can get. Okay. Um, how big of a group are we talking about here? Well, they approached with like 10, but they were well armed. Like, weird settlement of mostly, well, just random people. We've not really done that much fighting. I mean, I was planning on getting everyone to leave, you know? But that was up until... That was up until Benny put out that stupid fucking broadcast ad ad advertising that we were all here to the entire wasteland. By the looks of... But, but, but honestly, we, we, I think... Uh, sorry. Um, General Isaac punched up. Yeah, but you know, that broadcast was meant that we were, we got here. And clearly has also brought, at the very least, this strange person, referring to Stupid Jim, who is still on his knees, hands up, just staring at General Isaac. Like, you know, Scylla, we could have done a lot worse. So that goes, yeah, okay, Isaac, you're right, whatever. But anyway, that's the situation in five days. We're going to all be wiped off the face of the earth unless a bunch of people help us out. But I'm guessing that's not you. And how many are you in the city as of right now? There's about 30 of us. Is Quincy... And none of you are armed. Not really. Got a few machetes. Is Quincy important to you? Uh, are you? Well, I mean, yeah, we live up? here. Of course. Um, I mean, we were we wandered for months in the wasteland, right? We tried to get into Diamond City, but their gates were closed, and they weren't letting anyone in. So we just wandered and wandered, and we found Quincy. And there was no one here. The buildings were still mostly intact. So we tried to make a go of it, and Mary B, she got the plant working, so we had power. And to be honest, that's probably why whoever hired the gunners wants us out. Isaac's pipes in. You don't know that. You don't know that's why. Yeah. And so it says, oh, shut the fuck up, Isaac. Why <laughs> else would they come here? What else is around here? Well, there's uh I mean the power plant is definitely a plus. Yeah, well to be honest, it's not necessarily about what is around here. It's about From a... it's about what uh, Mikey J could do with the ground. Like he found he some found some kind of way to make 
he some, found some kind of way to turn the ground into something we could grow things out of. So we made a farm. And there's a water purifier in the plan. Okay. That we use for water. We have everything we need here to flourish. Which again is probably why the gunners want us out. That makes sense. You did all the hard work and now they just want to take Would it. I feel up to risking talking or do I still think that I should be worried about this group? That's up to you. Hmm. I have thoughts. Well, they wouldn't necessarily know your voice That's over true. your face, so... And you're distorted Yeah, I'm not going to keep doing it for the mask, sake of being intelligible on the stream. Um, <laughs> um, you should take something vital from the power plant and the water treatment plant and leave. Disable them and get out. And then take the town back when the gunners have lost interest. I, General Isaacs's eyebrow raises slightly and says... Who are you? I'm just with them. I'm technology person. Take off but your I've mask. seen something like this before. Pardon? Take off your mask. Oh. oh, she has a health issue that she can't. I'm sorry. I mean, it's bad for her respiration, and then she'd be sick. I don't get away from the computer much. Please let her speak for herself, sir. I don't know if I. Augusta, what are you wearing at this point? Um, <laughs> the vault suit with a gas mask <laughs> and a lab coat over it. Yeah, with the roll I'd made earlier. Yeah, with the roll I made earlier. Uh, essentially, to, for, for full transparency, I was rolling a perception speech check because speech was the best thing I had going for this particular kind of scenario to see if General Isaac recognised you, Augusta, and I rolled one success, which I put down to, right, probably isn't going to recognise Augusta unless Augusta actually says anything, which he oh, did. Okay. <laughs> so General Isaac says, you're Augusta Byron. Jade will immediately and moves closer to go <laughs> take a step closer to augusta that's not going to help don't do that <laughs> i don't isaac have any takes, argument with you take general isaac takes a step closer and is now about a foot away from augusta and just looks into your eyes through the gas mask it's a good trick she then grabs your hand and shakes it. It is an absolute privilege and an honour to meet you. I'm very I, relieved. Oh, I know. I, Yeah, thinking about it, that was a very insensitive way of me to um, say that I know who you are. Uh, I know your reputation in the wasteland, but amongst the Minutemen, we know what you did. You saved Diamond City. Well, I was part of a larger group. I didn't do a lot myself. Yeah, but that's not all. You saved all of those people from do all those ghouls from Doctor Life. You, you saved the, those mutants from the Brotherhood. I'm assuming these are some of the mutants you saved. Are they? I can't remember. No, neither of them are. Out of character. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> neither of them are mindful <laughs> mutants. That's like the yeah, all the only mindful ones stay behind. Yeah, not these people, but there are a group at the at the where we've come from. I mean, it's a pre pleasure to meet you, and honestly, I can't think of a better group of people to meet when Quincy's well, in trouble. It's good to meet you too, but I'm worried for you because I remember the Minutemen being a much bigger group, and you're a small group, and the Gunners can be very powerful. I don't know what they're like in this area, but if... Yeah, there's only three of us left. They will absolutely massacre you. Get out. Disable the stuff that they want. Take it with you so you can rebuild it when they're done and get out of here. Run somewhere safer. Just for we a short time. Augusta, like, I respect you, but I, we don't know if that's what they want here. We don't know if they'll leave. We don't know what they'll do to Quincy. But we have a plan. And does that plan involve dying? Because that's what's going to happen if you stay. 
No, it obviously doesn't involve dying, Augusta. <laughs> he, look, come with, come with us. Come into town. We'll go sit down, have a have a Nuka Cola or something, and let me explain the situation. All right? Are you interested in that? I'm interested in hearing. Have we got time though? At the moment, looking to everyone else. I. Uh... Well, we still have to find out how to get to where it's we no need to go. It's no good if when we come so back, the whole place is on fire. Time. Well, I can maybe help you with that too. But just hear me out. That's all I ask. Yeah, well, let's, let's... Sit and have a talk. That sounds reasonable. Reasonable? Yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And besides, gets us in the yeah, town to trade. <laughs> yeah. And, and our trade doesn't necessarily have to be on what's on Tumu. Our services could be traded. Huh. Speaking of... Isaac looks a bit confused for a second. <laughs> then the chase officer says, all right, come with me. Speaking of, do you have uh, injured, sick people um, in need of attendance? Oh, there's always someone right that now. needs a doctor. Are you a doctor? A super yes. mutant doctor? <laughs> That's a long story. I'll bet. Well, I know that if you're traveling with Augusta Byron, that there's going to be something special about you. Something special about all of you. But yeah, come with me. Um, General Isaac hands her laser musket to Scylla and says, you got the road, right? She says, yeah, Isaac, if there's anything happens, I'll start yelling, don't worry. And General Isaac leads you into town. So you walk down the road and you see... That what she told you was true. There are now crops, maybe a hundred different crops growing out of what used to be the central road of of um Quincy. This is very impressive diversity. Kitty. It's all down to uh, Mikey, Mikey J. But don't even don't try to talk to Mikey J. So you um, continue walking down the road. You see various people walking around. They do look vaguely concerned. You can overhear some conversations of some people debating whether to stay or go. You hear one person say, well, look, we could go. We were on the road before and we were fine. And the other person saying, but where? Where would we go? We were just going to go through all that shit again. We just got set up here. We should fight. And you hear various conversations. All of them are about the gunners. And so... General Isaac leads you into a pretty hollowed out building, like no roof. Some of the walls have burned away at the top. It's almost as if somebody, like a god, just reached into the building, trashed, crashed through it from the top with their, with their hand and grabbed a bunch of shit and then left. That's what the building looks like. And General Isaac gather, gathers a bunch of chairs and sits down in front of you and offers you each a Nuka Cola. And Jade will, Ooh. yeah, take it and says, "Thank you." Now you have the option of drinking it right now, or you can just, like just put it in your pocket and save it for later. Either way, that's entirely up to you. What you do with it, just you know, write down if you put it in your inventory or not somewhere, so you don't forget it. Um, I might drink it straight away. I, I haven't drunk anything it. for a while. All right. Just have to say, Tim, that is a beast of a cat you have there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he's part Maine Coon, so he's pretty big. <laughs> so, Okay, Augusta, uh, because you... who else is drinking the Nuka Cola now? Jade is too. I'll, I'll drink it. Okay. In that case, three people drinking it, you... Basically, max out your action points. Because I had the last count up to four. You now, because three of you have drunk it, it goes all the way up to six. Woohoo! Um, General Isaac doesn't appear to have given you any irradiated Nuka Cola. So she, <laughs> she, she seems like a good sort. You know? Half the bottles of Nuka Cola that exist in the world are irradiated because they were around when the bombs fell, but these ones appear to be radiation free. So cool. So she sits down and says, Okay, so here's this, we've got the situation. 
a group of maybe ten gunners are going to return and murder everyone. Unless we stop them. And currently, we don't have many weapons between us. There are three of us Minutemen. We're armed and ready to go. But we're outnumbered. So there We're not exactly awash with guns ourselves. No, but that is... Uh... Well, let me get to that. So, for us to arm the town and put up a good defense, we have two places to go where we could maybe get enough supplies to put up a decent defense of this town. Down the road away, there is a former military, like an old military outpost. Although the problem there is that it is being patrolled by a couple of robots and there's a turret that are still activated. At least they were active when we arrived in town. Maybe other people in town will know more, but essentially they won't. that won't be easy to hit. But on the inside, there is a decent chance of there being a cache of weapons, of pre-war weapons and equipment and other things. Maybe explosives. If... You hit the, if if somebody hits there and takes all that, then that'll improve the chance of the town. Also, the other play the other place to hit is the quarry that's up the road near that old vault. Now, when I was doing some recon around there, I found an old pre-war requisition order inside an old piece of machinery, and it said as far as I could tell, that there had recently been a delivery of explosives to the quarry. Those explosives are probably still there. The issue there, though, is that when I approached the opening of the quarry of, on the inside, like there's, a, there's like a cave, and I heard growling in human beastly noises. There's some kind of radioactive thing in there but because it was just me alone i left i pegged it because of course i did i'm not st there's a you don't get to my age and i should have mentioned at the top she's like 65 years old this woman which in the wasteland very few people make it to that age in 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 the wasteland she says you don't get to my age by being stupid so the way i saw it was that me and my men we're going to go and hit one of them. But if you want to hit the other one. We could maybe get enough equipment to equip the town. And put up a real fight. We can use the dynamite to set up uh, traps and explosives. That could maybe even take out most of the guns before they even get here. And then whatever guns we find in the military outpost. We could use those to finish them off. Did anyone attempt to get anything out of the vault? No. I mean I... Scylla was telling me how that she, when they first got there, they tried to use the console outside to get contact with every, anyone. And, yeah, there was nothing. Nobody responded. Do we know what number vault it is? Yeah, we do. It's, yeah, um, you were told by Zebedee before you left it, it's vault 88. So it is the one we're looking for. It was... Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. why we've come here. And also, yeah, um, but... our pit boy should open it. My... Um, understanding was that we only knew that it was in the area around, but not necessarily how close. So, okay. Um, I mean, when General Isaac is explaining this all to you, um, I know I didn't necessarily say it there, but um, just to save time, I can just cut to basically what she's saying. Like, she, yeah, that old vault, I mean. I stumbled, I walked past it when I was going around the quarry. Seems to be part of the quarry. But if there are people inside, they're not talking. And there's nothing, there's no There's no way to get that door open. I mean, if you find a way in and you find a bunch of vault dwellers who are willing to help, that would be fucking wonderful. Or if the vault's been long abandoned, there may be some equipment in there that may be worth it for the fight. I'm really hoping there's some equipment in there, but I don't know if it'd be any use for fighting. <laughs> um, Augusta, did you have any way to um, contact? Um, did you talk about having a um, amplifier for 
uh, communication uh, I, I've been thinking about that but it completely but depends on what we find in the vault obviously if we don't find anything at all we're screwed but we still have to go back but I've got a, if there is technology in there there's some stuff I can do because in that case we could contact they're already broadcasting aren't they I thought this is I thought about this as soon as we picked up the radio signal, or well, as soon as yeah. Jim told us about the radio signal. They've got some way to broadcast, and we can use that. Don't worry, I'm thinking about these things. Wait, <laughs> Jen Lazig overhears all of this and says, "Wait, you mean Quincy? There's somebody who you, you can broadcast." Well, we received stupid Jim heard the. Sorry, that's what we call him. Don't ask <laughs> me. I wasn't name. there. I'm stupid Jim. Pleased to meet you, General. And he um, salutes. The general yes. stares at him for a second and is like... Hi. We've had quite the time since we met Stupid Jim. Anyway, um, he heard a radio broadcast, which is why he knew there was trouble here. He wanted us to come and help. And we might have a use for being able to broadcast a radio signal. But don't worry about that just now. Well, if you need to use a radio... Uh... Well, hopefully we don't need to use it until we've got to a point where we don't need to be broadcasting a distress call for you all. Well... And the person to talk to about radio, the radio situation is Benny. Then we'll have to talk to Benny, but not immediately. Don't worry about it just now. The priority at the moment well, is Quincy's making sure your big. people are safe. You're probably run into Benny on your way out, to be honest, and he's always around somewhere, but yeah. So... I was thinking more on um, calling for backup from people more equipped to fighting to increase the numbers of TV. They're already broadcasting. Like, how are we going to change the signal and make it any better? They're already well, asking for help. They, when I was talking to Scylla, she was never really behind the broadcasting idea by the sounds of it. She got into an argument with Benny over it. So I think the broadcast is only active for about two days. But you need to talk to Benny about that. I mean, Jim heard it five days ago, right? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, two. Yeah, five days ago. You can set these things up to run for a limited time, or give them a specific amount of battery, and then it stops. So you can control it. You don't want to necessarily want to leave a a know, radio signal gonna... going forever, or you'll be attracting people in a hundred years when the nuclear battery runs out. Well, we heard the signal five days ago. We've always been scanning the radio, looking for calls for help, and we found one. And then we got here, and by the time we got here. Um, and the situation was explained. I was told by Scylla that the broadcast had been stopped. Oh. That's apparently, not Benny, apparently Benny was the one who did the broadcast, but then it was agreed that they would stop the broadcast because they thought that it would bring more danger to Quincy by announcing there are people here to everyone in the wasteland. That's understandable. It's a big worry for our settlement as well. Yeah, but by we don't broadcast. We got some pretty good people here. I mean, you you got here. What's left of the Minutemen got here, and I think we're the best shot for these people. So clearly, it worked out. Well, so we have you... to see what can be done. What are we going to do? Do we want to attack the robots that are patrolling the base, or do we want to try and get into the? tunnels by the vault or we could try and open the vault thank you Lisa. uh freddie looks over to the rest and goes well we have our goals to accomplish let's not forget lose sight of what we need and what would that be generally by sense. getting involved with another community's issues what would and your he goals just keeps be? talking uh but he looks over to the general. If you wish our assistance, I guess it could be purchased. Ah, there's that word again. What do you have to offer? I'm not going to lie. This you is, want us to this is... assist, but I mean, I know the goodness of our hearts, but we got our own community to worry about first. Well, which community? As is much that? as we want to help yours. Where did your community. Where is your Ours? Community? There is a need to know, sir. You know what? I can respect that. 
You know, like we are not. There's a lot of people who hate Jim. Augusta. Like a lot of people. I think that Diamond City still has a bounty on your head. I'm pretty sure the Brotherhood of Steel aren't happy with you either. And the Sisterhood of Pain, well, who knows what the fuck they're thinking. In fact, stupid they don't like Jim, anyone. Stupid Jim pipes up. I don't know anything about that. I left them months ago. And also, my name's Stupid Jim. The general looks at him and is just like, Okay. You may not be as stupid as you think, stupid Jim. Stupid people don't know they're stupid. You've literally chosen it as your name. That might show some kind of humility and intelligence. But then at that point, stupid Jim starts picking his nose and then walks away. <laughs> and then Donald says, maybe not. All right, then. He's looking over at stupid Jim and thinking there is true wisdom in knowing that you know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. So. <laughs> so the general stands up and says, but, look, I um, told you So this. yeah, Freddy's looking over oh. the general. We do not need caps or anything, but definitely tit for tat trade would be useful. Yeah, well, that's that's reasonable. I mean, what are, you've mentioned your goals. What are your goals? What are you doing out, out here? Oh, we lost him. Hello? I mean, oh, uh, um, hmm? did we lose Michelle? Hello? Are we still, I'm still on here? Screen? Hello. There we go. Okay. Yep, we can I hear lost Michelle. her. Sorry, I may I put myself on mute after I finish so to let everyone talk. Um, but yeah, what are you saying, Freddie? I hear you now. Um... Okay. Uh, for... Freddie was going, oh, I really don't want to discuss what we're here for, but let's just say we we're curious about the vault. I mean, I'm not in charge of our community or even on the council, so not for me to disclose any other information. Well, look, it's just us here. And I know you don't know me, and maybe you don't know the Minutemen, but we're, our whole thing is helping we people. need access to the vault is the key to what we need access to the vault i we don't know, know what's in there yet I we may need your that, help i don't know how i'd be able to help but if you were to assist us i would do everything in my power to get that vault open, and I will enlist everyone in town if needs be, who will probably be very grateful for your help to assist you. Maybe we can figure out a way to get it open. But, you know... No. Yeah. That's what I can offer you. If you want access to the vault, I can but promise that there will be plenty of us who will help you to try and do that after the danger has passed. And... First scavenging rights. Yep. First scavenging rights to the vault. That I think I can make Silla agree to. And if there's any resistance in there, you will assist us. I mean, of course. That's. I mean, again, I don't think you understand what the Minutemen are about. I'm just. I'm. I'm... Are you not? I just want to make clear since this is an agreement. Our companion is very pragmatic. Well, I mean, that seems fair. You know? She holds our hand. I agree. I will do everything in my power to enlist all of the help in I town shake it. to get the vault open. You will have first scavenging rights, and if there's something unseemly going on inside there that you need defending from, we will defend you. I think that at least he looks at the. I think that gets us what we need. Still hesitant about helping only because we have to survive to save our own community. Well, the best chance of that. But he looks over to. If we come people, out of the vault. He looks over to the people that sit on the council. That's your Friday, choice. if we come back out of the vault with the stuff we need and the gunners have invaded, we're all fucked. I guess they ain't wrong. Oh, that's the part I'm agreeing with why I'm doing this. I'm just saying. 
if we get involved, we could be just as easily killed beforehand too. The question, I think, is in what order do we do things? But I think the general has a good plan. Well, we can't defend the town without additional equipment. Well, that was something I, I was I debating with my go and help. with my man. You know, we were going to hit either the military outpost or the quarry. But we were currently deciding which one. We only really have the time to hit one of them, potentially. So if you wanted to hit one of them, we'll hit the other one. I don't think either of them is going to be enjoyable, so it's robots or monsters. I'm going with monsters. <laughs> I mean, if it's a radioactive monster... Me of course and... it's a radioactive monster. It's always a fucking radioactive monster. That's what I mean. If, if it is that, then I and... I mean, Roman would be the least affected of potential... Uh, damage on that account. I mean, it's putting a lot on you lovely super mutants because we I haven't got a lot of firepower and you all are a lot more a lot stronger than either me and probably Freddy, I guess. Exactly. Like physically. That's, that's why you got us. Well, yeah. you don't have to decide now. You said you Freddy's were about trade, four, right? four and thin. So. Sorry, Michelle? Oh, I was just speaking as General yeah. Isaac. She yes. Says you, you're into, you don't have to decide right this minute. You're in town to trade, right? Always. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, I have a think. I'm gonna. I'll. I'll take you to Caroline's place. Leave you in her capable hands, and uh, you can trade for what you need. And when you've made a decision, uh, come see me at the camp, where hopefully my men will be there this time. <laughs> I really hope so. Uh, would you happen to know if there's some abandoned structures or places we could stay in town? Um, if we're going to be here for a few days? Yeah, you know, there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of buildings along this route where you'd be able to find a room easily enough. Um, people have their places, obviously. People have made their homes, but you know, there's a few empty rooms and a couple of empty buildings along here that you could probably take take up with, without bothering anyone. Also, I mean... yeah. If you really, believe. but if you want to stay out of town, there's the Red Rocket Station. But you know that place is going to need a bit of a clean up. We we cleaned out a bunch of raiders from there a few days ago. How often do they come back? Do you know? Oh, we killed all of them. Then we've probably got a little while. I'd be surprised if any of them are coming back. We really, uh, they were a problem. Well, good work. We gave them a way out. They refused, and now they're all dead. But, you know, up there, there's still bodies up there, you know? Like, we haven't cleaned it out yet because we've been busy trying to have the time. going to smell a bit, but it's not like we aren't all used to that at this point. I would rather want to stay in town, especially if the people here need my help. Yeah. Uh, I agree with probably, Jade. You should probably talk to Scylla about that, Doctor. Um, if you want to... Help some people. She's going to be the one who knows who needs the help from a good doctor. It's not like these people get much of a chance to have someone like you around. I think if we can camp down for the night, Jade, if you're willing, you could have a look at any medical help that needs to be done. Freddie, you could look into some trade, see what you're willing to exchange. I don't know what you've got personally. I know what we've brought as a group, but you may have some other things you might want to trade. Well, we're going to need to get some food for the way back. Yeah. And some purified water. We're running. I mean, we had hoped there'd be some of that in the vault. A few essentials like that. I'd be mm -hmm. very surprised if the vault doesn't have some food. At least some that's not been irradiated, unless it's already been cleaned out by someone before. The... It's unusual for someone to clean out a vault and then close the door smartly behind them. Yeah, but I'm also thinking we have to stay a few days as we take care of a few things. We don't have a lot left, but well, so whatever you do, don't take too long because in five but, days yeah. this place is going to be a battle. I'll plan. We'll do everything we can. 
Nope, I figured we'd do some trading here and get what we need. And did we decide which one we're going to go to? Sounds like the monsters. The quarry? The quarry. Or... Yep. Out of character, I just need to step away for about a minute. Sorry about this. Okay, that's cool. Nope, no problem. I've been doing it on and off here because I have to. <laughs> so this is Michelle, me speaking. Um, so I'm... Yeah, I think we should... Uh... Good. Um, I was going to say, it sounds like, Freddie, you want to go off and trade. And Jade, you want to go off and find some people to treat. Uh, Roman, what were you planning on doing? Were you planning on going with either of them or going your own way? Um, I will... Honestly, there's not a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, that I can properly do myself, so I'll probably go with one of them as like a kind of bodyguard protector, whatever. Okay. Which one are you going with? Uh... Let's see, I believe Freddy can take care of himself. So I'll probably just go with Augusta. Alright, cool. So, if that's where everyone wants to go, let's start with Freddy first and get you to the trader. So... Um, Alright. Freddy, um, if they have any armor that isn't torso or right arm, I would be thankful um, for anything else. Well, General Isaac pops up, just says, "Yeah, no. What few weapons and bits of armor they had, we've already distributed amongst the people. Like the shop is not going to have anything like that that we can use in the fight for sale. Of course, it's going to have food and drink, though. That's the one thing it does have. I know of. Yeah, if we need armor, we should probably go to the military base. But Freddy will follow along to go to the... I don't suppose trailer. there's a workshop in town, is there, that we could use? There's a couple of workshops up at the Red Rocket Station. We have some junk we could work with. Right, now if you can make some stuff, you should make some stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm going to check. I can do stuff with robots, I think, which possibly isn't a lot of use right now. And again, out of character, just while I'm doing that, um, we got thank you for the 300 bits. So I've just got 600 bits this stream now. That's awesome. Thank you, uh, people of Twitch. I should really keep an eye on the chat more than I have. Um... So yeah, I can imagine me telling the group at this point, yeah, I can I can work with robot stuff and I can do robot armor and weapon mounts, but I can't really that's not gonna be a lot of use for us. We want to enable the robots, we want to destroy them, or at least help them destroy them. Let me have a quick look at your character sheets and figure out what um, if we are fixing I don't know if that uh, is a part of it, but uh, Jade have a multi tool um the description of that is that it reduces the difficulty of repair tests by one, but can't go under zero, I think. As far as I know, you don't really have anything that needs repair. The The workbench situation in this game are that you need a weapons workbench to create and install mods for weapons. You need an armor bench for doing the same with armor stuff and etc, etc. At this point, you don't have that many ingredients, not necessarily the skills to make amazing mods, but you can make some, you know? You can make some low-level stuff with what you've got now. So it might be, if that's something you want to pursue, you'd probably get something out of it, but it's not going to be, like, top-tier equipment we're talking. I think at this point it'd be better to have more guns than to have one slightly better gun. 
the agent of Eliza says, yeah, there's a couple of workbenches up at the Red the red Rocket Station. Um, I think there's a... Might be a few workstations inside the power plant, but that's a stretch. I don't, I can't remember. But yeah, there's a few workbenches around if you want to do that. But yeah, let me take you to see Caroline and get your trading sorted out. And you can go off and have a think about what you want to do. Thank you for your tame and hospitality. That's okay. I mean, thank you for making the deal and maybe we can save some folks. Maybe. Maybe we're not all going to die in five days. That'd I great, really hope right? not. So, who's going to the trader with Freddy? I think he was going alone. Unless Augusta and... I could go just to keep an eye on things, but it's possible also that you've got stuff to do. Roman, I'm not sure what you want to do. Um, was... I was heading with you for whatever you were doing originally, just to be a more of a bodyguard protector kind of situation. Okay, if you can each let me know where you would like to go and one by one and then we'll work it from there. So, Freddy, where would you like to go? I'm at Carolyn's or the Traders or whatever her name is. Yeah, Caroline the Trader. Drawing a complete Catherine, blank where are you going? Um, to find uh, the person who could direct me to possible uh, people in need of uh, medical attention. Okay, you're going to go to Scylla, um, the leader of the town. Augusta, where I'll would you like follow, to go? I'll follow um, Freddy, but if I happen to see Benny on the way past, I may want to speak to him. Okay. And uh, Jordan, although I... Roman, yeah. I don't know why. There's so many names flying around in my head. I'm getting them mixed up. Roman, where would you like to go? Uh, well, if I guess it doesn't need me, I believe Freddy was going to do something, so I'll probably just hang okay. around with him. So, Freddy, Augusta, and Roman are going to head off to Caroline the Traders, whilst Jade heads off to go and speak to Scylla. I'm going to do. I'm going to do Jade's thing first, and then we'll go to the rest of the group. So Jade, you walk out, and you look around, and uh, Scylla is still in the place where you left her, holding the laser musket, on the road. Um, not that it's. I can continue, but we are around time. Question oh, yeah. is, is it better to wait till next time to? And that's up to the up to the group. If people want to go for an extra half an hour, I'm willing. And if they don't want to, then that's cool too. So what what would the group like to do? You are muted. I, I can do either. Uh, I have nothing happening to it later, so I know that certain people have work and other options on days like today. So I do have to start getting ready eventually. I have work at four my time. Okay, uh, it's three o'clock that your time there now. Yeah. So I guess that means that you need to stop then. Probably around like halfway through the hour, probably. I think that's as much time as I have. Okay, that's cool. We can go for an extra half hour then. At, at, at half past, we will stop with a bullet. Well, we'll, st well, actually, I'll aim to stop at 25 past. That'll give them time to say goodbyes and move on. How's that for everyone? <coughs> Sound good? <coughs> Works for me. Nope, I forgot I blinked up my screen when I was talking. Okay, so going back to Jade. Jade, you approach Scylla, who is standing where you left her. What would you like to do? Um, yeah. Um, words. I, I will ask for um, if she knows of any people in town. Are there anyone in need of medical attention? Do, do you have any 
facilities where I can be use um, where you can send people or how are you getting by normally? Uh, what can I do to help? Basically. So that looks at you up and down and for a second she's unsure of how to react to a super mutant doctor because this has never happened to her in her life. And she just says like you know about doctoring? Really? It's a long story, but yes, I do. Well, you know, it's not like we're going to get any other better offers. There is one person that you could see. You can see my husband. What is what is the problem with your husband? He hasn't been taking the looming threat we're all facing well at all. And he will barely leave our room. He's indecipherable at times. Like, I mean... I haven't told anyone in town about this. I'm trying to keep panic low. You know, trying to, you know, avoid the situation. But he's scaring the shit out of me. And I don't know if this is even something that you can doctor away. Because it's not like a disease or a bullet wound or anything. But could you go speak to him? Of course. <laughs> I do suspect that this whole thing might... Scare the shit out of him, too. Sounds that way. <laughs> what, you mean on account of you being a mutant? <laughs> no, the situation, if based on the way he's acting. I don't know, I mean... Look, come with me. I'll take you to him. And you walk down the road, and as you walk down the road, she explains to you, we were on the road for a long time, and we were getting turned away from everywhere. There and there, we, we were never, we could never stay in one place for long. We try and set down some routes, and then there'd always be bandits. Or, I mean, one time the fucking sisterhood came into town, and we just legged it in the middle of the night, leaving what little we had there. Like it's, uh, it was rough. And so, by the way, was she the one standing at the at the the gate overlooking the the road out? Yeah, she was there at the gate with uh, at the end of the road with General Isaac when you first walked into town. And the general was showing Freddy the merchant now, right? Yeah. So before we go away, Jade will say, "Will you need another one to stand here to have a lookout, or will you send anyone else with me?" No, it's all right. I can probably step away for a minute. I mean, the good thing about the gunners is that they, when they make their ultimatums, they tend to stick to them. It doesn't only take me a minute to take you there, then I'll go straight back. It's no bother. Okay. But yeah, the road was long and the road was hard to hear. And I think something about the fact that, that we may not be as safe as we thought I may have broken him. Anyway... Here we are. She takes you up into a building. You've got some stairs. It's a relatively well-kept-together house, you know? Um, seems to have survived a lot of the ravages of the war and a lot of the ravages of time. Um, and you walk up the stairs. She knocks on the door and says, James, got someone here to see you. Uh, don't be freaked out. He is a super mutant. But he's all he's a good one and he may help you. From inside you hear stirring, but no words. She opens the door and leads you in and says Put him on his life in your hands, Doc. I will do my best. So I know you're I a super mutant you and I'm a human. But if you break him or if you hurt him 
I will kill you. And that is fair. Glad you see it that way, Doc. Now I'll leave you to it. I'm going to go back and look at the road. James? I'm sorry, what was your name, Doc? Jade. James, this is Dr. Jade. He's going to have a word with you now, alright? I'm going to be just down the road. I'm not going anywhere far, okay? James is lying in bed. He looks up and says, What? Well, well, uh, alright, fine. Love you. So it says, Love you too. And she walks out. And Jade will go and sit down on the floor besides the bed. James looks uh, at you and then moves back suddenly. It's just like, what the f... You're... Why th you're a super mutant. I am, indeed. <laughs> he stops for a second and just says... You're, that's a fucking eloquent way of speaking for a mutant. <laughs> yeah, I might have been lucky on that. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't know how to. I don't know what to say. <laughs> J Jade was your name. Jade is my name. I just thought. I just assumed that Scylla was bringing me someone from town that I may have known. I didn't know that... I mean, how can I help you? Well, I was hoping that I would be able to help you. Your wife was telling me that she was a bit worried about you. And I promised her to see if I could do anything to... Ease your mind from whatever is troubling you. I think I might be... I don't know how to explain this. I have experienced a lot of danger in my life. I've had to kill people. I've seen people in front of me die. And you know, that bothered me, because that stuff does bother you. I mean, of course it does, but I could live with it. But ever since the last few days, I just... He gets up and he punches the wall. I just can't stop fucking feeling like this. Is it the uncertainty? I just can't face another fucking fight. Or I can't face more months on the fucking road. I can't deal with any of it. I just can't. Honestly, and... No, I'm not going to say that. I'm not saying that. No. And he sits back down on the bed. You know, you humans are far more capable and um, now it's me searching for a word here. Um, <laughs> um, like strong, um, strong build. Um, you can do more than what you tell yourself you are capable of. I am sure that you will be able to do one of these things, although the prospect of it might seem dark and uncertain. 
Give me well, a medicine they... speech check. DC three. Difficulty three. Isn't that two skills? It is. Intel okay. Give me a medicine charisma check. Charisma. I will get this right one of these days. I promise. Yeah. I will get it right one of these days. I apologize. Charisma isn't my strongest one. So is that charisma speech? Yeah. Um, in, uh, charisma medicine. Charisma medicine. Okay. I can do that. That's three successes. You did it. It is. James looks up and says, I don't know what it is about what you just said. Like, I, I've had people, well, I've had Scylla, only Scylla, try to tell me that there are things worth keeping going for. And I couldn't believe it because I'd always find a reason why she was wrong. For some reason, Doc, I'm getting the feeling that you're right. Well, sometimes you just need to hear it from others because you will always believe that the your loved ones is saying whatever they can to soothe you, not necessarily the truth. <laughs> you know, that may be... Good point. Can we talk more? Of course. Okay, so you continue talking to James for the next uh, 20 minutes, half an hour. And whilst mm. you're doing that, we're going to cut to the rest of the group who are being led by General Isaacs to the trader, the town trader. And she leads you in to what was in the old world a pretty typical like uh, convenience store that has now been outfitted as Caroline's Place. There's a big bit of fabric over the top of the sign that just says Caroline's Place. And the general walks you in. She walks up to the counter where there is a woman in her mid-40s who is no perception anything check required. She is drunk. Isaac says, hey, Caroline, uh, this is uh, Augusta, Freddy, and your name was Roman, right? Yep. They're here to trade. Caroline I'm going to say very quietly, good luck, Freddy. Caroline says, oh, really? Yeah, Freddy is looking around. Why, yes. What lovely wares does your shop offer, kind lady? Well, now I do declare. Uh, sorry, I'm just uh, <laughs> trying to get the link. You have a Claire's? No, no <laughs> I said I do declare. I do declare. <laughs> Not often we get oh. a super mutant and a couple of vault dwellers. Oh, wait, sorry, sir. You don't appear to be wearing any kind of vault paraphernalia. We don't usually get your types around here in Quincy. And what do you get around here in Quincy? I'm perusing the goods I as we talk. I usually get good and drunk. <laughs> oh dear. I'm. Ah, oh, well. We might be able to do some train. I training. I just came across some fine bourbon recently. Oh, I'm always interested in some of that, my darling. Oh, boy. So, I have just shared with you... What else might you have here at your shop? I just shared with you the inventory for Caroline's shop on Discord. It's in the form of a Google Sheet. And I'm going to attempt to share... Well, actually, no, I don't think I need, need to share that with the viewing audience. That's going to be a lot of palaver, and it's not really that interesting for them to see. But basically... 
On offer, there are a bunch of casual clothing, a, ca a bunch of formal clothing, uh, a bunch of different kinds of food, uh, purified water, dirty water, there's a bunch of books and magazines, and there's a bunch of uh, random tools and other stuff. Uh, bobby pins, a multi-tool, a, a bunch of torches, various kinds of junk, a lot of junk, and a few ropes and things like that, so you know. Why don't you take your time and have a peruse, and uh, if you need anything, let me know. Although, I'll need, I would like to ask you something. Do I strike you as a truth teller? Tim, you're muted. I think uh, Tim is busy looking at the inventory of the shop. It's all right. We can cut back to uh, Jade for a bit and let you have a look but, at the inventory for a bit. Yeah. He's a, yep. I, I did look at the He's going, um, yeah, let me take a look. And he gives her an up and down once over. Perception speech, I'm assuming, is something along that line. If it worked, it should come up here in a second. Yeah, there it yeah, is. I think you look honest. Yeah, you got the feeling that she is, that she's telling the truth. And she's just like, well, do me a favor and tell the good general. Sober? No. Honest? Yes. <laughs> and you should tell the good general. You should tell the good general that, because I know what I heard. The general says, oh, not this fucking stuff again. We don't have time for this, Caroline, with okay. your, whatever you imagine. And Caroline just says, I heard it. It happened. Well, if you two will allow me to shop, you can hold your conversation over there, Captain, or General, excuse me. She seems... Honest to me. There, I told him. Thank you, sugar. Keep that in mind when we discuss prices You go off later. and I'll have a look around <laughs> while I tell this general that I know what I heard. And as you're looking, you overhear the general saying, nobody else could get any sound of that console. Only you, apparently. And only when you were what? Going to take a shit? <laughs> Caroline says, you know what I'm, you, I'm telling the truth. I went to do a squat outside that vault after a few too many, and I heard a voice say, get away from here. And it sounded like it was coming from that fucking console. The general says, I'm sorry, just, you're not exactly a reliable source, are you? You're always drunk. Why, and nobody else at any point, including me, has been able to get a peep out of that fucking console. And I've heard enough of this, so I'm, I'm, I brought you some customers. I'm going off. I've got to get back to watching the perimeter. And the general storms off. We will talk to you later, sir. And he does a doofus salute. You know. The general tips her hat at you as she walks out. Going back to Jade. You have talked out the situation with James. And at this point, it sort of came to a natural conclusion. Mechanically, in terms, you've got a good role. So essentially, you have done as much as you can for James, you think. And so now you're basically entering into the street. And in front of you, you can see two human men who are arguing with each other. And to your left is the rest of Quincy and everywhere else. To your right, you can now see uh, the general is standing next to Scylla once again, holding her laser musket and looking out onto the road. What would you like to do? Um, did James come out with me or did he stay? No, you got James into his kitchen and eating a meal and drinking a water. Which you get the impression that has not been a regular thing or a recent thing for him. Um, 
I will probably I will uh, slowly uh, move towards um, the general and uh, the wife, but uh, try to hear what the argument between those two gentlemen is about. Okay, so you're walking. I get so you're walking slowly towards the yeah. general and Scylla via the arguing couple of men. Like as close as I need to, like trying to hear without poking my nose directly in it or seeming to. Okay. Too so, focused on it. You hear the first man saying, "You can't. Why the fuck did you run across the crops like that? Why the fuck would you do that, Benny?" And the other one says, "I didn't mean to. All right, I just. I needed to get the fuck out of there." The other guy says, get out of the fuck. You know, I don't even want to fucking know. You've always been a fucking cunt, Benny. You're the worst fucking person in this town. I hope you die. And then he storms off. And the other guy just looks around just like shocked at what he just heard. Was Benny Volnov the, the one uh, Augusta wanted to talk to? You remember that they were talking about somebody called Benny... This could be the same Benny or a different Benny, but you know the Benny was the name you heard earlier. Um, yeah, so I, Jade won't do anything more about that. Um, he will, yeah. Walk slowly with the hand in his um, lab coat pockets um, and go up to um, to the woman at the gate um, okay. and as you approach uh, the general and Silla were just talking shooting the shit you overhear uh, the general say you've never you've never you've never met smart mutants before and so I was just saying, well, no. Have you? And John was like, well, of course. They're not that <laughs> common, but, you know, you come across them. Like that. So I was just like, well, I did feel reassured in his presence. And I wouldn't have left him with James if I did. And that point is when you they notice you and turn around. And, and I, was, I, was just, I was just thinking that... If I can, Jade will walk up like and then place a hand on uh, Scylla's shoulder and say, I am very glad you feel that way. <laughs> so it just says, well, you know what? It's better to be caught talking behind someone's back when you're saying something nice, I guess, right? Uh, and this is the best way it could have gone, I'm guessing. It is. And if the general will allow it, I... Uh... We'll take over your spot here for a moment so you can go home and talk to your husband. He is currently uh, eating and having a drink at home in your kitchen. Are you serious? Every time I brought I... him food, he would usually lay out in uh, uneaten. What did you do to him? <laughs> and uh, Jay would just go, I used my smart. <laughs> <laughs> Scylla just says, thank you, and she walks off and leaves you with the general, and I think we're going to leave things there, but before we go there is um, something I would like to go, like to mention so we are going, so at the military outpost there's a couple of robots walking around at the quarry, it's pretty quiet but then at at one point there is a howl. If anybody was there to hear it, they would probably say it was one of the more cuddling howls they'd heard. At the power plant, there's a few people there busily working out on things, and there's one particularly stressed out woman sitting at a computer, tapping away. And then outside the vault, Vault 88, the console crackles a little bit. 
And then a voice comes off across it saying, Please, there's someone out there. I need, I need someone. Please. And that's where we're going to leave it. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you for playing. That was a bit, uh, a bit more of a admin thing, more of a, a setting up session for the events to come. I was hoping that it would feel more sandboxy, be more about um, your choices than the first few sessions were, where we were very much setting up the long-term campaign. But yeah, how do you find it? Was it all right? It was fun. Thank you. I enjoyed it, and we're we're now at the core location to start the real fun. Yeah. So. And as per usual, I prepared and way these, too much stuff. The boring and dying. That's okay. You use it somewhere else. Oh, I'm it's sure. going to get used. There's all yeah. going to get used at some point. Probably. Well, most of it. Well, half of it, maybe. I did feel bad marching past all that stuff thinking, I bet there was a plan for that. But we'll come to it. Promise. No, I didn't have those kind of plans. Believe me. Yeah. Like, if something doesn't happen, that's not a thing I'm going to be annoyed about. We got... But yeah. Thanks for playing. And uh, people... We have several days to explore a few sites. Oh, yeah. So. Right. And just to find out what happens next, people watching, you should tune in next time. 7 p.m. UK, 8 p.m. some parts of Europe time, and uh, 1 p.m. UK See, uh, US Central time. Don't ask me about any more time zones because I don't have a fucking clue. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Wave goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. You can't see me, but I'm also waving. <laughs> Bye -bye. Wave higher. <laughs>